Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. This is the weekend edition. We've got a very special show for you. But first, a quick chat about goal setting. Goal setting is one of the most important aspects to achieving anything in life. If you don't know where you're going, you might end up someplace else. I'd like to invite you to join me for three days on the Mexican Riviera for an intensive goal setting retreat so that you start your 2020 with energy, purpose, focus, and momentum. The annual goal setting retreat will take place over the first weekend in December. Registration is now open. You can register directly at victorjm.com slash events. That's victorjm.com slash events. Or send an email to goals at victorjm.com. That's goals at victorjm.com. We're back here on the weekend edition. We have a very special show for you. Today's a very special edition where I came across a lesson in marketing that was simply too brilliant not to share with you. We're talking about taking a commodity, a commodity that's traditionally sold by the pound and elevating it to another level by wrapping a few key marketing concepts into it. I'm coming to you live from Portugal where the economy here has been through its ups and downs over the years. This is my third trip to Portugal. My father owned an apartment here and spent the winters here for a number of years. The roots of this story started in 1926 with a military coup d'etat that resulted in a fascist dictatorship in 1933 under the direction of Antonio Salazar. Life was difficult under the Salazar regime, and many local people turned to the sea to find food and economic survival. It was during these years that the sardine fishery expanded dramatically. At the peak, there were more than 400 canneries in operation. Canning of fish started in Nantes in France in the year 1824, and by the 1850s, Portugal too had started their own canning industry. The abundant supply of high-quality sardines combined with the extensive coastline and rich fishing tradition eventually turned sardines into one of Portugal's main exports. But folks, we're talking about sardines. They're sold by the pound. We're talking 3 to $4 a pound. So let me introduce you to Il Mundo Fantastico de Sardinhas Portuguesas. Translated, that means the fantastic world of Portuguese sardines. But the name itself doesn't convey the image. Imagine a store where the motif is the brightest circus tent colors and the decoration is like the flashiest carnival or perhaps even Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Inside the store, tins of sardines line the walls from floor to ceiling. There's an entire wall of sardines organized into columns where each column consists of a birth year. The tins are all painted in a period design and there's a custom design for each decade. There's a wall of tins of different types of fish, including tuna, octopus, smoked salmon, mussels, and eels. Sardine cans have dates since 1916 up until present day, with a relevant event from the year in question and signaling the birth of the most prominent personalities of that year. For example, in 1927, the very first motion picture movie to have sound, The Jazz Singer, was released. Each of these tins are a work of art. I can imagine people buying a tin and never opening it. It's almost too beautiful to consume. Now, I have no interest in buying a can from 1931. That date bears no significance to me. But I might consider buying a tin for the year that I was born, or perhaps as a gift for someone on their birthday. When you go into the store, the staff will tell you the story of the cannery, and how even today, all of the cans are packed by hand, the same as when the factory was founded in 1942. They tell you about how generations of people have made the sardine cannery their livelihood. Understand, this is not about sardines. I don't even eat sardines. But my wife and I were so taken with the story we had to go inside. My wife informed the shopkeeper that we would love to hear the story, but we would not be buying anything since we have a vegan diet. Well, you never guess what happened next. The shopkeeper showed us two cans with vegetarian and vegan contents. Of course, we purchased a tin. I don't even know what's inside, but I paid seven euros for a hand-painted tin with some kind of edible contents. They had literally hundreds of products in the store. Now, if someone doesn't like sardines, They have pickled herring, sea bass, salted cod, all in sardine tins. Each can is a work of art, and for the financially minded, there's even a gold sardine tin in the shape of gold bullion. No surprise, that was the most expensive item in the store. Instead of charging a commodity price for sardines, these tins are priced anywhere from 7 euros per tin up to 22 euros per tin. We're talking about a 200 gram tin that comes in a range of about 30 bucks a pound to 50 bucks a pound for sardines. Maybe you've figured out by now, the store isn't selling sardines. They're selling an experience of buying an affordable souvenir 
and they focused on mass customization. Even though there's hundreds of products in the store, most of them are not for you. There might be only two or three that could be of interest, but those two or three products are a perfect fit for you because there's something that speaks to you, that connects with you, that piques your curiosity. The lesson here is that the product is not the product. The product is the product of the product. What they're selling is the product of the product. So what does that mean? The product of the product is what you get from the product. So imagine if you went to the hardware store and you went to buy a drill. You're not actually buying a drill. What you're buying is a hole because that's the product of the product. Now maybe you're buying an impact hammer drill and this particular hammer drill can go through concrete like butter. Those are the distinguishing features of the product of the product. What is their product of the product? In their case, it's how it makes you feel. How do you feel when you walk out the store with the beautifully decorated bag and inside that beautiful painted tin of sardines? So where are these stores? They're located on the busiest shopping streets with the most tourist traffic possible. That's where their target clients hang out. So as you think about your real estate offerings, what are you doing that connects uniquely with your clients that makes them feel special? Like the product was designed specifically for them. If it can be done with a commodity like sardines, you can customize anything to fit your client. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.